I was just making a video on another subject and just then I realized that the React new docs are officially, they are out of beta. So let's talk about them. There's something really interesting from the beginner's perspective. Hey there everyone, Hatesh here, back again with another video and welcome to the fun type of videos. I am definitely running a series, I'll talk about that in a separate video, but here I just want to address something really, really important in the React ecosystem that is happening where you should pay your tiny bit of attention. This is not an extremely serious video, just a bit thought and thought process of a regular developer just like you. So here is uh, the React official documentation. And I really like that how they have moved into this documentation system. The library for web and native user interface. That's cool, that's awesome. And I really on the first look really absolutely loved the React documentation. Now if you go ahead and click on learn React, you'll see that a lot of things are just purely functional component. Previously, they were mixed of class-based component and functional component. And I have to had a discussion with a lot of people that, hey, class-based component was a thing, now it's functional and the future is going to be functional. A lot of people said that, hey, there might be some projects which might be supporting class-based component. But for all those projects, all those legacy, now is the time that you officially move on to functional component and rewrite your code base. So it's official now that you can almost forget about the class-based component. If you know them, that's great. You know the history, but there's nothing more than that. Now, if you look at this, all these tutorials and everything, uh, there's a nice sandbox available in the app.js, what it does. There's a nice, you can do a forking of it. That's all great, but my issue is there. It's not like nobody's going to complain. I'm the one guy here who is complaining a tiny bit, although everything is almost like a perfect uh, in this documentation. But what I don't like about is the installation section. So when you click on create a new React project, they officially kind of move into the frameworks directly. Now, React is a self-sustained thing. It doesn't need framework all the time. Surely framework gives it a rocket. And if you want to move into production, a lot of people these days just move directly onto Next, Remix, and a whole lot of things. But if you want to make just a portfolio website or a single page website just for some static content, you can just go ahead and do this with the pure React. It's really performant. It's not like that you cannot work with Next.js. So I really don't understand what's the need of having this production grade React app. So there is no way they are mentioning in the documentation to have the React as a core functionality. Uh, Next.js is here, Remix is here, Gatsby is here, uh, Expo, that's React Native part. We're not gonna touch that. Uh, so there is no mention of that. Now, obviously there is a mention, but I don't like the way how the mention is. So if you look at this, can I use React without a framework? Show details and it says, uh, you can definitely use React uh, without a framework. That's how you'd use React for a part of your web page. But if you're building blah, blah stuff and all of that. But what I don't like is there is no way they are mentioning at least this wheat or parcel should have got a couple of line of comments or code here that, uh, hey, this is how you can get started with wheat. Like what's more engaging than having a simple simple command here being mentioned. Now people have to go onto the wheat and have to figure out how the wheat works and everything. This could have been the perfect documentation if you just mentioned the wheat up here or parcel here or even the create react app. I know it's very bulky now. It's not the greatest of all, but I don't really like that. Why this everything is moving towards these framework based things and the standalone react as a library uh, is going somewhere with that. Now, not only that, I think a lot of interference is coming up from the Next.js. Uh, they are very aggressively moving uh, into Next.js. And the company behind that, Warsell, is moving towards very aggressive nature of the Next.js. In case you have de deployed any kind of app in the last two or three years, you have already noticed that when the same Next.js app uh, being built, you deploy it on Warsell and versus you deploy on AWS services, there is a difference in performance. It's getting very hardware closely monitored as well as optimized for the Warsaw hardware. Uh, so where's the open sourceness of the thing here going on there? So there's definitely going on. And if you notice here, uh, the day is not very far when the entire React team will be working for the next JS in the Warsaw company. So that's the direction where things might be moving. But overall, I like the documentation. It's very easy now. A uh, quick starter guide, uh, the developer guides, thinking in React. This is the really important section that how one should be thinking in the React and how they should be working on. So the documentation is well thought out, uh, great. But what I don't like is the installation steps that how the beginner is going to get started. Is he going to directly jump into Next.js and 
be overwhelmed that there is so much to learn. Previously, he could have just started with the React core React. Now it's buried down here, and I'm I'm worried on that part. That why is it so much worried on that? What's your thought on this one? Uh, what do you think? Let me know in the comment section. It's just a raw developer to developer talk. Let me know what's your thought. What your thoughts are about on this buried down without a framework thing.